Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, March 16th, 2015. Now, South by Southwest is in full swing here in Austin. Technology is a big part of that, and a big part of the technological sector is artificial intelligence and robotics. We were reminded of that this weekend with the demonstration that was covered by Leanne McAdoo, people saying, stop the robots, AI, say goodbye. Exactly the sort of thing that Hugo de Garris was pointing out would happen as people began to become aware of the negative possible consequences, and there are a lot of those, and a lot of people, not just the uh, people like Elon Musk and uh, Stephen Hawkins, but now it's become a mainstream understanding of the problems that AI can present uncontrolled. Now we have a, uh, a presenter at South by Southwest, a serious founder, also now a pharmaceutical tycoon. USA Today points out that the founder of Sirius was speaking at South by Southwest. Roth Blatt is the founder of Sirius Radio, now the chief executive of United Therapeutics, a transgender, transhumanist philosopher activist, had this to say about our future. Roth Blatt said that we will achieve eternal life through technology and had this to say about robots. Robots in the future will have constitutional rights. Hey, how about giving some human rights to humans today? Human rights that are recognized as rights in the Constitution. We possess those rights because we were given them by God because we're humans. I wish we could have that now and not worry about what the robots are going to have. But of course, they mention that it's not just this one person speaking up in defense and in praise of robots and denigrating humans. It's also the producers and directors of movies that are showing at uh, South by Southwest. One of those, Ex Machina, the director there, spoke also at South by Southwest and said, we shouldn't be afraid of artificial intelligence. Basically saying that he wants audiences in his movie to feel connected between Ava and her human friends and creators. He says, I'm 100% for the robots. Now you know how they're going to spin this. And that's how they use the movies to shift human perception, to shift the public's perception. They're trying to make them more human, more sympathetic than the humans. Very easy to do that, to lay that out as a pattern to push people. We've seen that in Sony's interview, they actually used a silly comedy to try to push for regime change by assassination in North Korea. So, of course, there's a lot behind these different uh, movies that they're putting on. He goes on to say, I'm very sort of suspicious and worried about people, but I don't feel that way about robots, says the director of Ex Machina. I think they might be more reasonable than we are. We don't really understand how these things work, he says, so that's strange, but they seem to know how we work. They can anticipate things about us. Let me explain something to you. The robots don't have some uncanny sixth sense where they can predict things about us. That is simply data mining. And you've got to understand that there are human programmers behind all of this, for good or for ill. We're starting to get caught up into kind of a... Uh, uh, Wizard of Oz scenario, where we look at this illusion, this technological illusion that's been put in front of us, and we forget that there's a man behind that curtain. I've seen it happen earlier in the computer field. 30, 40 years ago, you used to be able to get people to do pretty much anything if you could get the computer to print something out. Now, of course, it may be that you had garbage in, garbage out. Maybe your model was absolute garbage, but if you could get the printer, the computer to print this out, if the computer said it, then people would be inclined to believe it. And so, as this director says, he says uh, he doesn't want to perpetuate a doomsday scenario. He doesn't want to perpetuate fears of artificial intelligence or any undue concerns. Instead, he's going to give us a program of his own to model how benign these robots are going to be. But of course, Al Gore was also speaking. And Al Gore has got computer models, just like the people who are pushing global warming. And we shouldn't question the scientists in their white lab coats or the giant compu mainstream computers, right? We should just do what they say and not question it. And if we do, Al Gore said, we need to be punished because we're deniers. Notice how he uses religious terminology. EcoWatch points out that the former vice president focused on the need to, quote, punish climate change deniers, saying that politicians should pay a price for rejecting, quote, accepted science. He said, we need to put a price on carbon to accelerate these market trends. What he's trying to accelerate is the time frame in which he's going to become the world's first 
carbon billionaire by selling these indulgences. And to underscore the religious nature of the way he's selling this, he talks about uh, the Pope. He says, how about this Pope? Talking about the coming encyclical on the environment, he says, I'm not a Catholic, but I could be persuaded to become one. We should remember that it was just last week that the outgoing chief, the UN chief of the IPCC, the group that has been pushing the idea of man-made global warming, said that global warming was his religion. That's why they talk about it as being deniers. We should always understand that science is never settled. And the people who push back the hardest against the skeptics are the ones who are the most insecure about their model. But of course, Al Gore is going to punish deniers and Google is going to punish us by taking us off of the search lists. That's what we've been talking about, their move to do that for a couple of weeks now. And as New American pointed out, they have already done this when it comes to vaccinations. They say, of course, that their knowledge vault is, quote, the largest store of knowledge in human history. And it promises to let Google answer questions like an oracle rather than a search engine, even turn a new lens on human history. There you go, they're going to rewrite everything and they're already delisting sites that talk about the risks of vaccines saying that's not proven, that's not a consensus amongst science. As the New American points out, the facts in the much vaunted knowledge vault of Google are simply truth based on consensus. And we need to understand that that consensus throughout history has usually been wrong. Now, as New American points out, truth according to Google means that anti-vaccination websites no longer make the cut, despite the fact that recently released federal statistics reveal the risk to children's health posed by vaccines is overwhelmingly greater than that posed by the disease these medications are formulated to combat. And of course, they point out that Google's approach with their knowledge vault is merely truth on consensus. That has never been correct. Even if we go back to vaccines, we understand that Louis Pasteur had to fight the scientific consensus to get that established, to get the science of what he was doing established. People don't want to change. And you never establish facts just by having a vote on it or a consensus on it. But they will always push back and try to censor it, as our reporters found out today in another area of South by Southwest, at McDonald's. Joining us now are Rob Dew and Anthony Gucciardi. Okay, so McDonald's sales are tanking globally. So they go on a charm offensive at South by Southwest, and you guys decide you go visit them. What happened? Well, ultimately, yes, they are losing money over and over again. They're underperforming the market. And last month in February, they lost another massive amount of cash. They're going down and down, and they're trying to be trendy now and have a South by Southwest tent. So it's a fully functioning McDonald's downtown because they don't actually have one because no one downtown wants one. <laughs> so they had a big tent, a big white tent, Fully staffed. They had one a, a pr pretty big band playing there, and it was full service. So we were going in there. We we're saying, "Hey, we're going to take some shots of this. We're going to expose how they're trying to get new demographics." Admittedly, they're trying to pretend now that they're natural. We're moving some antibiotics in their chicken, which was basically a farce. But we're forcing them to do all these things. But we couldn't even get the food before we even were able to buy the food. They had the security officer push me, assault me out the door. And they called the cops over and over and over again, the cops telling them they can't do anything until seven cops came total. And they escorted me and they said, get off the property. You're allowed to stand on the public sidewalk, but you are not allowed to go into McDonald's. Well, you guys All are because dangerous. because I asked about yeah. what was in the food. Yeah, he asked, I, I, he asked the I, lady behind the counter, what's in the McNuggets? What's in the McNuggets? And uh, she goes, uh, food? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> food? Yeah. And then they all huddled That's what around. I'm serving. I'm serving. And they started food. freaking out. Because they told us we could film. They knew we were filming. Other people were filming. It's not a big deal. But it was when I said, what's in the chicken McNuggets? Do you know what's in them? That they all freaked out. They were like, PR nightmare, PR nightmare. Well, the real PR nightmare is assaulting someone who's literally trying to buy McNuggets and saying, hey, what, what's our order in these McNuggets? I didn't even tell her what's in them. And wow. then we interviewed employees who admit they don't even eat there very often. And we all know why. And in the video that's coming out on YouTube on the Alex Jones channel, you can find it when uh, at the time this comes out, most yeah, likely. Too bad to see um, we actually had one of the employees come out with some food, and I said, do you eat this all the time? She goes, no. And I said, <laughs> well, why not? And that's when the PR woman from McDonald's, who was working at she South swoops By, swoops back in, swoops and, grabs in and grabs her by the arm and says, get over here. And she says, go away. You, know, you can't talk to these And she calls guys. the cops again, and the cops came. The cops were very nice, by the way. 
they knew it was a total farce. It was the security people from McDonald's who were totally insane, pushing me, assaulting me out the door, literally. I said, hey, I'm going to go. And they said, out, get out. I think there's a total of eight cops plus the security, the big security guy. That kind of reminded me of the guy from Dallas, the short, big guy. Like, <laughs> yeah. it was that same mentality. Yeah. Like, the JFK uh, really uh, guy that was pushing Leave people. now. Leave out. No, he says, leave out. Leave, leave out. out. Leave out. It's like, what, what uh, language is that? Yeah, I mean, here what we language were, are we speaking? Leave out. We what weren't we? even, we were, we were buying leave food, out and then we were looking at this weird Ronald McDonald selfie yeah. statue. This, this Take a selfie with Ronald McDonald. Uh. And we were taking that on film, and this guy just starts pushing me and grabbing me by the arm and, like, wrapping his arm around me like he wanted to dance with me and just shoving me out the door. So I had this image. You, know, you guys said you got thrown out of McDonald's. I, I thought maybe they'd send over Ronald McDonald. He'd squirt you with his uh, lapel flower or something like that. <sighs> but it sounds like kind of like an idiocracy scene where it's like, what's in it? Food. Food. Leave out. Leave out. <laughs> Hit the number. What yeah, you no, want? No, no, no. What's in it? Food? Uh, I don't know. Well, you got a little bit of a, a preview clip. Yeah, we got a preview clip showing uh, just the outside of it, what it looks like, and then Anthony going in, even asking them. She asked, are you going to film? And he goes, we might. Is that okay? And she says, sure. We go in, and I'm, we're going in from the really bright to really dark, so I'm adjusting the camera and stuff. And then as we go to this one area where they're giving out free French fries, um, Anthony asks the lady, you know, do you know what, what's in the McNuggets? And that's when that happens, that whole, and it's three, it literally asks her three questions, and we walk away. We're waiting in the other line to actually get food. We we're gonna get some and then kind of make a little, you know, a bit of a protest about the McDonald's food, which we never even got that far because then the PR person comes back over. She doesn't want to really engage Anthony. She's just like, leave, leave. And he's like, what, what's the big deal? And then the security guard comes over and then it escalates from there. About eight cops by the end are in and around that area trying to look all nonchalant, but just waiting for some sort of incident to break out because I guess they're on the defensive, you know, Working for McDonald's, essentially. And to be clear, eight cops for asking what's in the chicken McDonald's. Three questions. Yeah. McDonald's food? Yeah. Do you know what's in it? How many chemicals are in the McNuggets? Do you know? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. We're now not allowed to film. We're about to be removed by security. How's it going? What's up, brother? Leave out. Uh, why? I was told we could film. I'm about to buy some. Right, right. You gotta leave out now. I'm about, I'm, to I'm about to call the law. You're about to, I'm about to call the law. Uh, I was told we could film in here. Come on, but the lady just told me that you gotta leave. Uh, why do I have to leave? I don't know. You have to I like McDonald's. I'm a fan. I want to buy a McRib. Uh, excuse me. Can you stop pushing me? Right, well, you need to leave. I'll walk out. Right, well, stop walk pushing out. me. All right, well, walk out. The lady asked me to ask you to leave. That's You're very, not moving. That's very nice of you. I'm not, I'm not allowed to uh, purchase McDonald's food anymore. I was told we could film, but I asked about the McNuggets, and now I'm being kicked out. So I was told I'd be arrested if I didn't leave. Um, can I speak to the woman as to why I'm not allowed to be in here? She can meet you out here. Just go outside. She'll come out and talk to me? No. She said she'd speak to me. I'm not going to speak. Out to no comments. I'm a loyal McDonald's fan. I just wanted a McRib. Can I get one of those? Could you bring me one out? Do you eat McDonald's food? Why can't I go inside? Is everything okay? I, I don't don't block the entrance. Well, I appreciate you being nice okay. about it. The other guy just kind of picked me up and pushed me out. Oh, I understand. Um, probably highly illegal, but anyway, uh, could you just tell me why we're not allowed to film in there? Because she told me we were. Okay, so it's just their decision then? Yes. Okay, I understand that. I, I don't, I well, don't I appreciate know. you being nice yeah, about it. No problem. All right, I'm we'll go ahead. Well, all right, we are. Do we, so, so we actually had block. two policemen called on me now. <laughs> but don't block the sidewalk, okay? Does it it'd be good for the company if someone that worked there admitted that they don't eat it because it's crap? Um, it appears also that she's trying to get that a third officer now 
a third officer to uh, get me out of here. He looks like he's maybe calling in some some backup. Uh, let's, let's, can you show me and uh, how terrible I am? Um, it's going to take three police officers. Once again, I've, I've, all that's happened to me is I've been pushed out by a large dude who has no identification as a security officer or anything, and he could randomly have just been a, a random guy. But now it's going to take three police officers, there's, there's one calling in some backup, to apparently escort me out of here, even though I am now on a public sidewalk, as I've been instructed by an actual nice sheriff who didn't understand what was going on and personally didn't care and said I should be able to uh, go back in there. But there is that, in fact, one woman over there that I guess works with the PR department for South By for McDonald's, and she is not very happy that I'm asking questions. Do you want, let's, let's, would you like to talk to us again? Pretty amazing. So we're going to have a full clip of that later. But any other comments you want to make? You know, I think it's amazing that this is just one further illustration that McDonald's is failing. They are losing. The consumers are pushing them out, and they're so afraid now of it coming out what's actually in their food and people actually deciding individually and as a whole, as a group and society nationwide, that they're not going to eat the crap anymore. You can go to Whole Foods and buy organic food for the same price of a Big Mac now. They know they're losing, and they're going to try to be natural now. They're going to mm -hmm. try to be trendy mm -hmm. with South by Southwest initiatives and things like that. And ultimately, all this does is further ruin their image by assaulting someone like me and telling us we need to leave immediately for asking what's in their food. So this is just another continuation <laughs> of their terrible, terrible propaganda to try and make us eat their garbage that is attacking us and making us sick on a daily basis. It's interesting because when this stuff came out about them saying they're going to switch to antibiotic-free chicken, they also talked about how they're going to switch to milk that didn't have growth hormones in it, talking about using kale, all these different things. It was reported by the Times, the New York Times, that this is in response to people's tastes changing. It's not at all. Even the CEO was pointing out that people were concerned about the quality of the food and the additives that were going into it. That's why they were making the change. It wasn't because people have suddenly decided that they want less sugar or whatever. It's not because of the taste of the food. It's because of the concern of what's in it. And if they wanted to really do something about 10 years ago, they could have. Yeah. Because they could have said 10 years ago, okay, we're sorry. We actually know now the science is clear. This is bad for us. We're going to fix this before Super Size Me came out or around that time. And I think they would have actually persevered. And I don't think they'd be losing money right now. I think they would actually be trendy. But the fact is, they're such a dying, disgusting corporation pretending to be natural now, pretending to be trendy, that it's never going to work. And you can probably expect them to come out with some organic options. You can expect them absolutely to come out with antibiotic-free chicken and stuff like that. Well, and when are they going to implement this stuff? It's, it's going to be, be years, years, it's be years and years down yeah. the line. Oh, it's going to be five years before we can get the antibiotic chicken. Well, it's right. going to be a major change in their whole delivery system if they were to go to antibiotic-free chicken because that's going to mean that they're going to have to raise the chickens in a totally different way. So it's going to be a long time before we see any of that coming. But, you know, when they come after you with the police and shut you down, that, as you pointed out, is a huge event. It shows that they're trying to hide something. And we've got a story coming up right after the break. We're going to be talking about how a reporter with antimedia.org is facing a six-month sentence because the police didn't want her filming a protest. Time and time again, they've shut this down, but they just keep coming back, trying to jail people who are exercising their First Amendment rights. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. 
used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com Oil of Oregano Formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules. You will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue. Wild crafted from the Mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire. This winter season, it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano. Now available in our limited first run at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. A reporter for the website antimedia.org is now looking at a possible six-month sentence for filming the police. On January 18, 2014, there were protests in Fullerton, California over the beating death of Kelly Thomas, a 37-year-old homeless man who suffered from schizophrenia and died as a result of the beatings. Now, they point out in the article on antimedia.com that, of course, these were protesters from different counties, cities, even states. They were different color protesters as well, protesting genuine police brutality. And this is something that the police need to understand as well, because this was the son of a police officer, the son of someone who taught the police about the proper rules of engagement, how to avoid getting involved in use of excessive force. And it was his son, a former policeman, who was killed, beaten to death by these police. A very egregious case, and people were angry about it, but they were peacefully protesting this violent event. Nevertheless, the police decided that they were going to put on full riot gear, get confrontational, demanded that people leave the area, and this journalist, who was working for antimedia.org, continued to film what the police were doing. This is Patty P.M. Beers, a journalist that works with Antimedia, was one of those who was arrested for not leaving the area. Now they were trying to put her in jail for six months. This trial begins today, they expect that it's going to go for a few days. I think it'll probably go through the end of the week. The point being is that she's a journalist. She's a citizen. She has First Amendment rights. And courts, federal courts, have upheld time and again that the police cannot arrest someone for filming the police, for filming a protest. They were peaceful. And yet we see that this protest that was protesting genuine police brutality, excessive force, and the fact that the government would not hold these officers accountable, that is ignored by the mainstream media. Instead, they focus on the approach that divides us racially, that black lives matter, that only black lives matter, perhaps. This is the article that uh, Drudge picked up from Infowars.com by Paul Joseph Watson. Black Lives Matter protesters target white diners who are eating brunch. These are predominantly white diners in Portland, Oregon, as demonstrators come in and disrupt the area, saying that black lives matter. They're trying to make this, and they are making this, into a protest between races, rather than protesting the senseless, unnecessary, mindless brutality of the police, they're making it into a racial matter. And this is bearing very bitter fruit, as we've seen now in Ferguson, with a couple of police officers being shot who were not doing anything excessive at the time. We see them being shot, and we now see this from an Indianapolis playground. We see a girl and her young brother being attacked, apparently, with racial motivation. Now, as you look at this video that was posted up on Facebook, the girl that is getting beaten says, what did I do, what did I do, while the assailant continues to punch her as she pleads with the attacker to stop, another man comes over and stops the attack. She gets her young brother, starts to leave, and then this young girl who had originally attacked her comes over and attacks her again. At this point, her, her brother, who is probably five or six years old, tries to defend her, and the attacker attacks him. The attack appears to be racially motivated, as we see in the video, as the victim is asking, why am I being attacked? She has absolutely no idea. One of the boys standing there says, you white, bitch. In other words, that's the reason we're attacking you. And that's the fruit of focusing on 
Black Lives Matter instead of focusing on the police brutality and trying to stop that. Now we see that the AR-15 ammo ban is already coming back. We've got Democrats in Congress demanding that the ATF widen their ammunition ban. They're calling for the BAF to use its existing authority to ban ammunition. They don't have any authority to ban ammunition. But New York Democrat Representative Elliot Engel introduced legislation that would outlaw the M855 outright. Guess what? He doesn't have the authority to outlaw it either. The Constitution is above the laws that he makes. It's above the regulations and the executive orders that are made by uh, the ATF or uh, Obama. They also point out, though, that the congressional Democrats are arguing that an out-of-touch gun industry is lobbying to fight tooth and nail to keep cop-killing ammunition on the streets. They say, in trying to argue this, that the Second Amendment is madness. But even the police officers are not having any of this. The executive director of the Fraternal Order of Police said any ammunition is of concern to police if it's in the wrong hands. But this specific round has historically not posed a law enforcement problem. Nevertheless, they think the Second Amendment, the Congress uh, critters who put this out, think that the Second Amendment is madness. We see another form of madness, and that is the war on drugs. And it gets more absurd by the day. Look at this report. This is an article out of Roanoke, Virginia. A child has been suspended for having a leaf that even looks like a cannabis leaf. Now, of course, this leaf was not a cannabis leaf. Nevertheless, the child has been suspended for a year. A sixth grader in the Gifted and Talented program at Bedford Middle School has been suspended for a year. The Sheriff's Department filed marijuana possession uh, charges against the youth in juvenile school. Now, the marijuana possession charges have been dropped because this is not a marijuana leaf. Nevertheless, they are keeping the one-year suspension. Months after the fact, the family learned that the substance was not marijuana. A prosecutor dropped those charges at that point because it had tested negative three times. Now, the parents are getting involved in a malicious prosecution lawsuit, as they should, because the officer who was there knew that it wasn't marijuana. They say the field test came back not as inconclusive, but as negative. Yet, this officer still went to the magistrate and still swore that this child possessed pot. Now, we've seen this happening in the schools many times. We've seen children being suspended, expelled because they ate their Pop-Tart into what some people thought was the shape of a gun, or they pointed their fingers like they were shooting a gun. This kind of madness extends not only to the drug war, but also to the Second Amendment and the war on our rights to protect ourselves. We need to understand, and I think both of these stories illustrate how the fight to keep our Second Amendment rights, as well as the fight to roll back this unconstitutional war on drugs, both of those are being done and should be done at the state level to push back against these federal encroachments. People on the left seem to understand one of these rights and people on the right seem to embrace the other one and yet reject the other side's rights. We need to come together for both of these. Once we understand where our rights are on guns as well as on things like marijuana, once we truly understand the basis of our rights, that is when we can stand together and push the federal government back into its place. Well, stay with us right after the break. We have a special report from Alex Jones. We'll be right back. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must 
must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must-have for every modern, independently-minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-888-253-3139. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and could not be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of Nutramedical grade bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosylcobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. And finally tonight, here at InfoWars Nightly News, we're going to break down one of the most important stories we've ever covered in my last 20 years on air. We're talking about the potential of thermal nuclear war and World War III. Ladies and gentlemen, this is truly unprecedented. We have Vladimir Putin coming out on a state-run documentary over the weekend and saying that he was prepared to use nuclear weapons on NATO forces and readied the weapons, aimed the weapons, during the last year's proxy war between the West and Russia on the Russian doorstep, historically part of Russia, eastern Ukraine, the Crimea. Then on Fox News last Friday, former top general Bob Scales came out. We're going to play a clip in just a moment and said it's time to escalate things and start killing Russians, it, that it wasn't enough that brigades of NATO armor with U.S. troops involved are going to fight Russians in eastern Ukraine, where Putin now admits they have troops. He said we need to kill a lot of them to really teach Russia a lesson. The only way the United States can have any effect in this region and turn the tide is to start killing Russians, killing Russians by uh, killing so many Russians that even Putin's media can't hide the fact that Russians are returning to the motherland in body bags. But given the amount of support we've given the Ukrainians, given the ability of the Ukrainians themselves to counterattack against these, what, 12,000 Russians camped in their country, uh, sadly, that's not likely to happen. Lou. Well, Putin's gone public and said, we know you started the war. We have nuclear weapons. Yes, Russian troops are there. We're ready to fight. This is truly over the top. Look at these headlines. Putin's nuclear threat. Russian leader nearly started World War III over the Crimean War. Another headline. That's how the Daily Express. London Independent. Vladimir Putin says Russia was preparing to use nuclear weapons if necessary and blames U.S. for Ukraine crisis. Regardless of which side you're on of this situation, this should be giant international news right now. It's hardly in U.S. news. If some trendy person wears a different color sock uh, or has a big beard, it's huge national news at South by Southwest in here in Austin, Texas, where we broadcast from. Meanwhile, earth-shaking events are taking place. And the State Department admits they started a proxy war over a year ago, overthrew the elected Ukrainian government, put fascist right-wingers in, and started a war with Russian-held areas, just like Georgia in 2008. I'm not lionizing, as I've said a thousand times, Putin or the corrupt Russian government. They're not offensively starting this, just like Hitler started World War II with the Russians. They didn't start it with Hitler. And of course, that was deeper into World War II, and it was Russians and Germans that killed 40 million if you combine both sides. So Americans and people of the world 
have not seen a major world war since 1945 ended. And we become very, very insulated to the danger we're in. But when it's top generals and Vladimir Putin talking about nuclear war and the generals just laugh about it like it's no big deal, we're seeing incredible rhetoric out of current NATO generals saying, we can just sweep aside the Russians. Our troops are ready for war. They are so cavalier about this. The Russians are not cavalier about it. And they've been attacked by Hitler, Napoleon, you name it, and they didn't lose either time. Here's some of the headlines just today. Russia starts nationwide show of force. Russian bombers test RAF uh, Cold War back. Russia's Putin reappears after 10 days absence, laughs off, uh, laughs off the gossip that he's supposedly dead. We have a normalcy bias where we just accept anything now. But we just played the clip of the general laughing about all this and just calmly talking about, let's kill a bunch of Russians as if they're not going to do anything. Maybe the Pentagon and these war hawks have been picking on third world countries so long, uh, like Guatemala or, or Iraq, that they don't understand that Russia is a major world power with high-tech aircraft and high-tech nuclear weapons and cruise missiles and submarines off our coast. What on God's green earth is going on here? We need to call Congress. We need to call the media. We need to pray to God. We need to go to church and ask our preachers to talk about this. We need to get the atheists talking about it. I don't care who you are. We need to force a global debate about the comfort zone now that we've got to just talk about nuclear war and brigades of tanks and thousands of soldiers going in to now have an open war with Russian troops in eastern Ukraine, and it's all about stealing Russian gas and oil pipelines to cut off Europe. And we've got these reports coming out of the London Guardian that they're going to be shutting off Europe's energy, so get ready to be poor as a tool of social control. This is unbelievable. And the fact that it's not major news here in the United States really shows you how we've gotten to be in this narcissistic echo chamber believing our own bull. I believe the establishment are smoking their own dope. They're believing their own propaganda. This is extremely dangerous. I see members of the Republicans and Democrats calling for war with Russia. Meanwhile, we're told the biggest thing in the world is the Israeli election or, or Iran. The Iran nuke threat is nothing compared to poking the bear and starting a war with Russia. In fact, I believe I'm being too calm even now. We've had listeners ask, why aren't you covering more of this on the news? I only spent 15 minutes of the uh, time on the Sunday show. I spent an hour today. Maybe I should spend all three hours tomorrow on this because this is a big deal. People didn't think World War I could happen. It happened. Tens of millions died. People didn't think World War II could happen. 50 million died. 20 million Germans, 20 million Russians, another 10 million total. 50 million people. This time, it'll be a thermal nuclear war. These despots that run our government and other governments always think they're invincible like Napoleon or Hitler. And they always go to Russia to die. And they take millions of us with them. You can feel it in the air. You can feel the danger. The historians... The experts are saying this is unprecedented danger. This is crazy. The world is moving into a period of crisis. And the globalists think they can break Russia's will with economic warfare and lowering oil prices in an attempt to make them submit. But the Russian psychology is similar to American psychology. When an outside invader messes with them, they circle the wagons. It's not going to work. And the people at the Council on Foreign Relations and the globalists at the Pentagon, who are a bunch of chicken hawks, need to have some reality testing now and de-escalate this situation. That's it for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Pray for peace, pray for liberty. Lord willing, we'll see you back tomorrow night live with the 7 o'clock transmission and, of course, on the live radio show, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you're watching this transmission, you are the resistance, you are the hope. So take action and let your voice be heard before this new crop of criminals destroys the planet. We've had thousands of wars in our history. We've killed untold hundreds of millions of our own people. Now it's time to not do it again and destroy the planet. The choice is up to all of us. We better get busy. Ugh.
The only way the United States can have any effect in this region and turn the tide is to start killing Russians, killing Russians by uh, killing so many Russians that even Putin's media can't hide the fact that Russians are returning to the motherland in body bags. But given the amount of support we've given the Ukrainians, given the ability of the Ukrainians themselves to counterattack against these, what, 12,000 Russians camped in their country, uh, sadly, that's not likely to happen, Lou. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.